Marc-Antoine, uh, Olivier, Olivier, I, I, I am not sure we heard the same thing this evening. Uh, what uh, Narendra said was something different, I think. Uh, uh, China was able in 50 years to increase the life expectancy of its citizen by using fossil fuels. And I don't believe that a country like uh, India and some African country will be able to have this level of development and this level of energy without fossil fuel. So what I heard Narendra saying is that countries like uh, India and other countries are going to use fossil fuel at a much higher level than uh, the, the actual level. And I think your summary was very biased. If you allow me, Chair, uh, very quickly. You see, uh, when you look at India's track record on renewables, what we have achieved the last five years, trust me, is more than Germany. Yeah. You see, is better than our track record. What we have, we have been walking the, you know, talk. All that we committed in Paris, all that we committed in uh, Glasgow, or for that much, we have already walked. We have delivered that. But that said, at the same time. World over, 82% of energy that the world is consuming is coming from traditional sources. In India, story is more or less the same. 67% of electricity that we consume is coming from coal. Look at, you see, at the same time, you have to see India is not some small banana republic. We have security challenges from the north, from the Indian Ocean, from so many sides. When you look at India's energy scene, 88% of oil that we consume is imported. 88%. So we consume 5.2 million barrels of oil every day. Natural gas, we are importing roughly 56% of our total requirement. In solar power, 90% of equipment that we are using, you know, for solar are imported mainly from China. Uranium, you know, big chunk of uranium we import. So that makes us extremely vulnerable in terms of energy security. Now the question is that, you know, on the one hand, we have to see the renewable, and at the same time, we have to see the energy security because we are a very large country and also we are threatened from all sides. The final point I'm trying to make is energy transition in a country like India, and we, we are more committed than most countries in the global north. Uh, you can check it on the cold numbers, facts. But that at the same time, energy transition in India we will do with Indian characteristics based on ground realities in India, based on the fact we still have 700 million people who are below energy poverty line. So for us, that comes first. And if there is international pressure, trust me, we are strong enough to deal with it. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's uh, perhaps the privilege of the president, but uh, it's uh, uh, 7.35 and the cocktail started. Unfortunately, uh, we will not have the time for a debate on uh, more general issues. These issues I wanted to debate is what are your expect uh, expectations for next uh, COP28 meeting? The second is perhaps a focus on uh, China. China is uh, it's the elephant in the room. Uh, and we need to speak about uh, why, uh, uh, about what will happen in China. And depending on what's happening in China, this will have a, a dramatic impact on the energy world and also on the environment worldwide. And perhaps also a question I wanted to raise. Uh, in uh, 1973, the uh, first oil shock was created by a conflict between Israel and uh, the uh, Palestinians. Uh, uh, and uh, perhaps uh, are we at the eve of uh, an oil shock taking into account uh, it that, was not uh, with the Palestinian, it was an attack by Egypt and yeah, Syria yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time. Know, the I Palestinian see, yeah, had nothing to do with that. Sorry, yeah, Olivier, no, to, no, to just no, no. Uh, recall uh, that. I so, know, history. I know. I know. But uh, there is uh, perhaps uh, there is uh, what uh, perhaps there is, uh, we are at the eve of uh, uh, perhaps an oil shock. We are not taking into account the fact that the depletion referred by Nicola is taking place uh, and the investment of uh, in oil and in uh, oil and gas has been reduced by a factor of two since uh, 2014. So uh, 
it's for the time being the Palestinians, but what will be uh, the position in the next few weeks of uh, the uh, Arab governments? I'm not sure. I hope that the, uh, what we heard from the, uh, the advisor of the president uh, uh, of the UEA is, uh, is right. So I want to uh, uh, thank uh, the panelists and also thank uh, the audience for this debate. And anyway, perhaps the next time it will be necessary to have a longer, uh, uh, more time to have a, a, a long, an in-depth debate uh, on uh, all around the world. Thank you.